And welcome back for our next match. We've got two fascinating teams. Solar Fleet versus Babylon 5 dot dot. Yeah, totally different setups from anything we've seen so far. Um, well, I guess not totally different. We still have kind of a Tengu te kite team going on at Babylon 5. But Solar Fleet, battleship heavy fleet, something we haven't seen before. Um, it's only seven ships here, and they've got two Vindicators, a Macarial, Loki, Guardian, Wolf, and Carries. And for Babylon 5 dot dot, you've got two Nighthawks, Scimitar, three Tengus, a Worm, and a Succubus. And notably, their entire team, except for their Scimitar, has warped in at zero, so they are right on top of those two Vindicators, which is never a place you want to be. Yep. Um, and while we have a second, I just want to say, Kill 2, I heard your impression of me uh, in the studio, and I don't sound anything like that. All right. Um, it looks like the teams are a pretty good distance apart. The Scimitar for Babylon 5 dot dot way up above everyone else. And the teams are now going. The match has started. And I, there's going to be damage right on top of the uh, Babylon 5 team any moment now once those Vindicators lock. It looks like Maktep. And, uh, and Maktep is how it's spelled, but in Russian, I believe it's actually pronounced Master. That's For anyone who's not familiar with the concept of kiting, which is what we've seen from a lot of these Kaldari teams, the whole idea is to hold range with ships that uh, do more damage at higher ranges than your opponents. And and also, they are going to try to uh, limit the low, the smaller range, higher damage ships from being able to target them by using sensor dampeners to keep their lock range very short. Yeah. Uh, kiting teams tend to require controlling your opponent a lot. So you need webs, you need uh, usually damps. Sometimes you can do it with track and disruptors against a uh, turret team. They, those teams generally require a lot of skill to pull off right. But when you do it right, they uh, do very well. Solar Fleet taking the early damage from the longer range uh, setup of Babylon 5. Their Guardian and their carries took quick shield damage, but the Guardian was able to catch the carries with its armor's reps and is keeping it alive under fire from Babylon right now. That carry is going to be a key setup for uh, the Solar Fleet team because with it they'll be able to completely neutralize one or maybe even two of the uh, ships from uh, Babylon 5 dot dot. Solar is shooting at one of the Babylon 5 Tengus, and it is down in low shield right now, but it's holding steady for the moment, probably getting reps from that scimitar. Meanwhile, Babylon 5 dot dot is shooting at the uh, Solar Guardian, which is now into about half armor, and looks like it's going to drop before too long. We're probably going to lose the Tengu first, though. As the Guardian gets shot, the Carries is taking damage too, but I, the Guardian is keeping the reps alive. The Carries is still alive. So that's one Tengu has just died for Babylon 5. There's a Nighthawk that's also still just sitting there at zero. It doesn't really appear to be moving, so I have a feeling that it's going to die pretty quickly. Both of the Nighthawks for Babylon 5 have decided that they would rather sit right on top of the Vindicators. That is an interesting choice. Uh, despite the one Babylon 5 Tengu going down, um, the Guardian's tank on Solar Fleet is still breaking, but he's hanging on for a while. He's about to lose all of his armor and his structure. It will probably not last very long. Meanwhile, that Nighthawk that is tackled by the Vindicators is dropping very quickly. He's down to about 5% shield. The second Nighthawk may have hurt us because he has decided to start booting it away from there. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Guardian for Solar Fleet is now down, and let's see if that affects the survivability of the Solar Fleet ships. There. It'll definitely affect the survivability of those frigates, and once that carries goes down, I assume that Babylon 5 is going to be able to deal a bit more damage. And the carries is now dropping quick, and he's about to die. Um, we're still... Still looking, I think, pretty strong for Solar Fleet, but without that logistic ship, it could make some difference. Yeah, things could go badly for him, but uh, that second Nighthawk was caught by the Loki's webs, and uh, the Vindicators are right back on top of him. He'll be dead in just a few seconds. Uh, Nighthawk is uh, still in shields. He's uh, getting some reps from that scimitar, but shield is now down, and he's going to die pretty quick. Yeah, the Dot Dot team is uh, taking down the Wolf now, which is a good choice. Once you got the uh, logistics down, you can take down all the small ships quickly, which eliminates all the E-War that they have and all the damage. Uh, Loki taking some damage on Solar Fleet's side, and Solar Fleet's Wolf looks like he's not going to be long for this world, but even if he's gone, uh, the battleship, the heavy setup of Solar Fleet, even the little ships, there's still a whole lot of DPS left. In Meanwhile, battles. the Scimitar for Babylon 5 dot dot is already dead. For some reason, he got right on top of those Vindicators. He may have been damped, but still, there's no reason for that Scimitar to get in that close. This is my kind of fight. I like these high damage setups. Ships are exploding. It's exciting. Um, only two Tengus, a Worm, and the Succubus left on the Babylon 5 side. Babylon 5 dot dot. Uh, shield damage being applied to that Tengu, and he's going down pretty quick under the massive DPS of Solar Fleet. Meanwhile, the Wolf for Solar is, uh, there you go, he just dropped. And their uh, Loki has taken some shield damage, but he's armor tanked, so he should uh, survive for a bit longer. 
One thing that is important to note, Babylon 5 dot dot does not have an Alliance logo either. And uh, so far, that's not been a very good sign for teams of the Alliance tournament. So far, just about anybody using a Vindicator is one, which has been uh, really fun to see because those are great ships to watch, all the damage they do with that big 90% uh, web bonus. The webs on the Vindicator are essentially old-fashioned webs from before the nerf, which is huge. Blasters do insane amounts of damage if they can catch up with you, and the enemy team is not using tracking disruptors, which it seems like these Tengu kite teams are using more a remote sensor dampener Evor instead of tracking disruptors, and uh, certainly isn't helping them with these vendors right on top of them. It definitely doesn't help when you get caught by the Vindicators, certainly. but having the webs from the Loki can't be helping with that. Nothing but a sole Tengu left on the Babylon 5 side. Solar Fleet still has their big damage battleships. Both Vindicators, the Mac and the Loki. Loki's taking a little armor damage, but their tanks still look pretty good, all things considered. That Loki, or that Tengu, is quite far away now from the uh, rest of his opponents, but he's heading towards his opponents, which yep. may not be the best call. Maybe we'll he just wants to end it before uh, <laughs> the Solar Fleet loots the field. Maktep, or Master, as the case may be, is burning in on him quickly. Like a lot of the uh, Tengus we've seen, this one is using the afterburner speed subsystem, which uh, means that they uh, take a lot less damage from other missiles because the afterburner keeps your signature radius low, and they still go pretty fast, but it's going to be hard to keep out of range of that Loki. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Tengu Kalari Kai teams have done pretty well in the tournament so far, but uh, certainly didn't do too well against this high DPS in-your-face setup that Solar brought. And now Maktep's uh, Macario is right on top of the Tengu. He's got him muted, and he's got webs on him. That Tengu is going to go down pretty quickly once the Vindicators catch up. Yep, he's taking shield damage, and it's piling on quick. Solar Fleet doesn't seem to be taking too much damage at all. Uh, I think this one is pretty much over. It's worth noting that even though there was a lot of faction battleships fielded by the Solar Fleet team, uh, none of those ships were a flagship. We've only got one Vindicator flagship and a couple of Macario flagships in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I have four minutes left to go in the match, but it certainly isn't going to take that long as uh, now the battleship's caught up with that Tengu and he is going down like a rock. Yeah, he's down to about 20% shields now. It's just a matter of time. Still have three minutes and 51 seconds left. These yep. Vindicator teams have been ending their matches faster than anyone else with uh, good reason with all the damage they're doing. Yeah, a very commanding victory by Solar Fleet and in this one. Uh, they're going to have destroyed every single one of Babylon 5's uh, ships. Babylon 5 only knocking out the smaller ships of Solar Fleet. I think they got about 21 points on this one. And that about wraps it up. And we'll turn you guys back over to our uh, studio commentators here now to see if they have anything more interesting to say about dresses and their other home hobbies.